I'm going to start in Isaiah 9.1, which, by the way, was 700 years when Isaiah got the prophecy before Jesus was born, okay? So, long time. But this is what Isaiah prophesied, and it's quoted in Matthew 4.15, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. And I highlighted that for you to, to put the focus on the Gentiles, okay? Because Isaiah was alive, the, the Galilee region was not known as a Jewish community. So that is where Jesus ended up camping out for quite a bit of his ministry. But at the time Isaiah was given the prophecy, there wasn't a heavy Jewish influence there. And he's saying, even there, using it as an example of an ungodly place, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. <laughs> and boy, is that true. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, they would have known that shadow of death, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You are with me. So even though other people are fearing, I know you're with me. And I don't have to be afraid when I know that you're with me. A light has dawned to those people who were in that region. And Jesus said, keep, very next verse, keep turning away from your sins. And come back to God. For heaven's kingdom realm is now accessible. That's, that's the Passion Translation, and I really would encourage you to think through what this means. Because sin has been accepted in our culture, and if you try to call sin out according to the Bible definition, you're labeled as somebody who hates other people. Because everybody should just be able to do whatever they want. That's part of freedom. You know, our culture is built on freedom. And it's true that people are allowed to do whatever they want. But if we're going to call ourselves Christians, then we want to use this as a standard that we have rules and there's boundaries in here for our own good. Yeah. And that's because God loves us. Yeah. And he knows better than we do, doesn't he, church? Because yeah. that's what it meant. They were sitting in darkness, but now they've seen a great light. And darkness and sin go hand in hand. And light and life of Jesus go hand in hand too. So we come out of that. And then once we come out of it as Christians, now here's this contending that goes on. The enemy's still going to try to pull us into sin. And we're going to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, like King David did, remember? He strengthened himself in the Lord. We're going to pull on that promises of God, repeat them, worship, sing songs, remind ourselves, keep it on the front burner of our minds, the Word of God, invite Holy Spirit to every situation. And it doesn't mean we're perfect, but the odds of you listening and, and paralleling and sinking your life with God's will increase dramatically when you live in that anointing with the Holy One. You invite Him in. And then I realize, he tells me, keep turning away from your sins. And, and often, if, if we're bound by sin, it's because there's a weakness in our life, and it's a besetting sin. Remember that verse in Hebrews? It's a besetting sin. Mine might be different from yours, right? There's some general things that we could think about. Like for men, pornography in general tends to be a, a, an area where they can fall. Um, but doesn't mean that, that one person falls to it into the same category as another because there's, we're all made up differently, right? But the enemy tries to find that place where he can get in and keep you doing those besetting sins. So there's some structure that we've been living our life on that makes us think that the counterfeit is better than the real thing. And we go back to that counterfeit and then the devil brings shame and he accuses us about it. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from that law of sin and death. So I can keep bringing that to the Lord and saying, Lord, I repent of that. You said in Matthew 4, 17, I can keep turning away from my sins and come back to you for your kingdom realm is accessible. You can give me the tools that my natural flesh doesn't have. You can give me the tools I need to not keep repeating that destructive behavior. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. Nothing's too hard for God. Thank you, Terry Willis. That's the name of her song, right? There's nothing he can't do. All right, Isaiah 9.4. I'm going back to Isaiah now from Matthew. This is so good. After, after 1 and 2, which we just read by the Sea of Galilee, those who sat in darkness will see a great light. Isaiah 4 then says, you have broken, speaking to God, you've broken the chains that have bound your people. You've lifted off the heavy bar across their shoulders. The rod the oppressor used against them. You have shattered all their bondage. That's prophetic. You can claim this verse. 
Whatever that besetting sin, if you're saying, I just haven't been strong enough to stop that thing, that's okay. Because God's power is greater than our ability. And look, it's my turn. Some point in the future, it's not going to be my turn anymore. My turn's going to be over. So I'm going to try to make the best of my turn that I can. And, you know, part of that is also being in sync with my wife. Because that's the most important person in my life. Other than my relationship with God, that's it. And if that's not going well, I better focus on that if I expect my relationship with God to be working well. Right? If, I, if I'm strong this way, it should also reflect in strong this way too, right? And that's my priority. That was the covenant commitment I made. I said, till death do us part, for better or for worse. It's all been better, hon, I promise. But there was no worse. But in, in case there was some worse in there, it's... It's still my number one thing. That's, that's part of this. It says it's a covenant, right? It's not some casual thing. It's sacred. Marriage is sacred. So focus on it. Make it a priority in your life. I don't mean to get off on that tangent. I'm just saying this is part of why staying in the Word is so important. So you don't let the culture shift your priorities. Oh, he lifted off the heavy bar across our shoulders. And if you were bound by some kind of sin, like for me it was drug addiction before I got saved, that's how it felt. Like, the boss said jump, and you said how high. Right? You were a slave to that thing. You couldn't control it. Tried every program known to man. Nothing lasted. I could do it in my own willpower for only so long. And then something would happen in my life to bring stress, like, you know, what you probably have heard me talk about. It was 40 years ago. This coming Tuesday will be 40 years ago that my uncle was murdered. And that was a very profound damaging thing that happened to me in my life and I didn't have the tools to know how to deal with it. I was that guy sitting in darkness and then I, I met Jesus and I saw the great light and he took me out of that really depression to the point, I don't want to go into all the details of it, but things can happen in our lives that create a, a poor in spirit, right? I was poor in spirit. I was depressed. Something happened that I had no grid for. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't process it. My life dramatically changed in one moment. It was a Monday night, December 20th, 1980. I'm sorry, December 22nd, 1980. And uh, I had left work. Our family had a big trucking business, and I had left work to go home. And then the phone rang when I got home, and they said, you got to come back to the office. There's been, a, I think they said, an accident. And when I got back to the office, I lived in Union. I had to go to Elizabeth. Uh, I saw my uncle's dead body in the front seat of a car. He had been murdered right in front of our office. My father worked next, they, they were at the same, in the same office. My father heard the shot, had come outside, and saw the man pull away. So, uh, again, without going into all the details of that, it, it was a very profoundly damaging thing that happened to me because my whole life had been assumed that that's, that would be the career trajectory that I would be on. And when I saw what happened, I didn't have enough knowledge about why something like that would have happened, and I just spun I just spun down, right? I was, I was this slave that had a heavy bar across my shoulders. And what you do when you're depressed often is you turn to the counterfeit affections that the devil offers because the pain is too strong, so you want to numb your pain. It's the worst thing you can do because then it compounds the pain. And then you're, you're caught in that trap of the enemy, right? And it was only through a witness of my mother walking through the same tragedy with us. She was in just as much pain, maybe more than me, because she knew my uncle even better than I did and knew what a key person he was. And yet, because she was saved, there was a different peace about her than anything that I'd ever seen before. And it was a really very present help in her time of trouble. I didn't know the language of that then, but she was walking through the same situation with an equal amount of pain, but had another set of tools to deal with that. And the girl that I thought I was going to marry saw what happened, and she didn't want anything to do with me anymore. And in a way, I couldn't blame her. I mean, you know, it's front page news. It looked like a, it was a mob hit, right? So, like, really, you're going to marry the mob? I don't think so. But I didn't see it that way at all. I was a young guy, you know, at the time. So, point is, that could happen to anybody at any time. Life can just deal you a hand that you have no grid for. And that's where this time to seek the Lord really matters, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. When you're in that broken place, the kingdom of God's available to you. 
you didn't have to qualify it by your good works. It's accessible to you. And man, this is such great language. Verse 5, after telling them that God has shattered the bondage of the enemy, every boot of marching troops and every uniform cake with blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. All right? So you want to know that translated into my life? Once I got saved, which took a while after that, two years actually, before I actually surrendered my will, the Lord was working on me that whole time. If you've ever heard the Holy Spirit called the hound of heaven, <laughs> like he's tracking you down and he won't let go. And that was, that's what would happen to me. He was just tracking me down. So finally, it was two years later when I finally surrendered. And the war for me was the music. That's why I quoted Led Zeppelin earlier, right? Because, you know, I didn't even realize when I first got saved that I wasn't supposed to listen to that music. And then my mother one day came in and said, what's the name of that song you're listening to? This was by the Grateful Dead, actually. It's called Friend of the Devil. <laughs> that was the name of the song. You'd think I would have caught on, right, as a Christian. But I was so used to singing it, it never it even dawned on me. And she said, you're no friend of the devil, you're a Christian now. Like, you know, just common sense, right? So I... I called up the foreman of the garbage truck company and I took boxes of my albums and met the garbage truck and I dumped them in the, in the back of that truck. See, that's what this verse is talking about. Everything the enemy tried to use against you, you're going to put it in the fire and you're going to burn it and it's not going to be available to be even used against you anymore. The boots, the uniforms that are covered with blood, the war is over. It's gone now. You're not going back to that thing. Because once you've tasted the real thing, the counterfeit is exposed as a counterfeit. Yeah. And pornography is exactly that. It's a counterfeit. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying the, the weapons of our warfare are greater to fight that thing. They're not carnal. But they're mighty through God to demolish the stronghold. If ever there was a counterfeit, it's pornography. It's giving you a stimulation without any of the reality of the relationship and without any of the commitment. We break that power now in Jesus' name. There's a greater force among us than the force of the enemy's lies. Yes. 